So here we have 2022.2, and if I go to my launch, I want to point out a couple of things that's changed with this release is no longer do we have the HyperMesh client uh, currently in the start menu. Uh, we simply just have the HyperWorks. If I right click and go to more, open file location, you'll see that we have uh, the classic interface still available via the shortcut. And this is just part of the plan to transition to our modern interface. Upon launch, so let's go to launch 2022.2, we'll get a little splash screen, the version, and then be asked to select our client, our server profile, directory, and go ahead and create our session. You can also load any recent files from there. Uh, here, we'll just go ahead and uh, start with our file. Drop down allows you to import files, change your solver interface, do conversions. Uh, but mostly, let's look at the help. This will be a really good starting place. So, we'll go to what's new, getting started, and video tutorials to get started. All right, under what's new, we have our release notes, and this again will kind of highlight where those classic shortcuts have gone. Also, if you want a dedicated site to go to to help find your tools, I recommend this tool finder. And then if you kind of want to refresh yourself on, you know, why is Altair making this transition and modernizing the interface, uh, we have a dedicated site to that as well, kind of talking about the history and the motivation for this transition. Uh, another item, if we go to get started, our keyboard shortcuts and mouse controls can be accessed and downloaded into a PDF. Okay, so let's get into the interface. As I mentioned, we have our file dropdown, and I want to point you to our preferences, uh, which would be super handy, and I'd highly recommend spending a little bit of time looking through these. Next, uh, we'll talk about maybe the layout. Uh, so we have our dropdowns, we have our ribbons that we'll get to in a moment. We have our model browser. Here's our GUI, our orientation cube, and our view controls. So let me simply just drag and drop a model into the interface. This could be HyperMesh model, Orphan Mesh. Uh, geometry. Once we bring it in, uh, we'll see our model. Something to change a little bit with the browsers is if we want to see any of the details of these, we just simply need to double click on them and activate a uh, dedicated property browser. It's going to have a lot more of the data listed here in tabular form. If I click on any of these, uh, we'll have our entity editor pop up. And you can see all the different parameters that we can modify. If for some reason materials had not yet been created, so if I scroll down here, I could easily create them here as well. Um, call this kind of the interactive stack menu. Go to create, edit, edit, etc. If we really did like that classic type of layout, we could always go in here, go to browsers, show entities. And this works really well for smaller models, providing a quick overview. Now that we have uh, that defined, uh, next one that I want to point everyone's attention to, this is definitely new, is the entity selector. Everything that's in your model is going to be accessible from here. Currently, you see I don't have any surfaces. Let's go ahead and start maybe with elements and orientation. So if I zoom in with the middle mouse, or I rotate by clicking and holding the middle mouse, and right click to pan, I can kind of move around the model and select some entities. So maybe I'll start with elements. And I could click elements uh, via this drop down, or I could simply click it on my keyboard. I'll draw your attention to this underline. Uh, this will be your shortcut key via your keyboard. So click E, we'll activate the element selector, and I can just do a box select of those. Next one is our triple dot, which is our advanced selector. If I wanted to edit any of these uh, elements, um, I could do that as well. So let's do it by configuration. That's a popular one. And we could basically specify what type of elements uh, we want to isolate out of that selection. So here I just have uh, triads and quads. Uh, this also could be accessed through the space bar. All right, so the next one, uh, which is brand new, which is great, is the right click menu. Um, so right now it's in idle mode. So I right clicked and I just get the basics kind of selections. If I change this to E, Elements, again, go back in here and select and right click. This will update based on my selection. So now I can select Displayed, Reverse, Adjacents, again, noting all of the keyboard shortcuts. Uh, so give that a look. Uh, another popular one is just simply organizing the model. So Entity Selector, Orientation Cube, right click Advanced Menu. Uh, down here we have our Display Options. So here you get access via D. Um, you can say Only Elements. 
only systems, contacts, basically again, whatever's in your model. And a lot of these browsers can be moved around if you want to simply drag and drop them. All right, so let's dive into one of the ribbons just to show the workflow. So if we go over to geometry, we'll activate the geometry, go to surfaces, and maybe I'll extract some surfaces. So we have our sub ribbon, and here we have our options, or our stack menu. Working left to right, um, I'm going to go ahead and select my source elements. So I can zoom in here, click on this element. I could right click and say select by face, or I could simply hold down alt, select face, and click play to execute. This will create surfaces in my model, and I'll be able to quickly isolate those. Hit escape on the keyboard, hit S twice, control A, isolate. Here we have our surface geometry, and I'm going to go ahead and uh, do another option. We'll go to the split option by plane, working left to right. Uh, something else I wanted to point out in any of these, particularly these newer tools, uh, it has the options for in-app help, such as this little video. Highly recommend just taking a couple moments as you familiarize yourself to watch these videos. So let's go and select my target, select my tool, have it snap to geometry. So this happens to be the midpoint. And then we have these handles along with their micro dialog. So let me go ahead and grab this handle. Maybe I want to just snap this cut right here. And I could do middle mouse click or just simply click split. All right, so that's the ribbon, sub ribbon, guide bar. Uh, next, which is a pretty popular, obviously, is the translate tool. So if I go ahead and click on this service, hit control C, control V, um, I will get a little translate option uh, that also can be activated through here. How about if I want to rotate uh, this part about this point? Uh, that's where our hold down shift comes into handy. Hold down shift, click and drag, release, and now I can rotate about this location. And this uh, is universal across many of our other tools. Okay, control Z, control Z, control Z. Hit A to bring everything back, and now we're back here looking at our model. Uh, the next ones I wanted to quickly point out um, if you're still unable to find some of the tools you're looking for, we have this little uh, search glass here, or hit Control F on your keyboard, and maybe type in faces, and this will give you an idea of where uh, your tool is. Because likely you, you need know the name of the tool, and you just simply need to look it up. Uh, the next one I want to point out, which is really important, particularly for a variety of the different workflows, is this parameter criteria file. Definitely take a little bit of time either to load the defaults that we currently have in session, or create your own. And this works across uh, mesh rebuilding. This works across connectors and batch meshing. Definitely keep that in mind. Furthermore, uh, we still have the multi-window type of layout. So if I want to activate two windows to this page, or we could do that here. Or if I simply want to add another, we could add it here and load in our results. All right, for those uh, diehard folks who still love those panels, um, I do want to point out that we do support them still for the tools that have not yet been ported over to the guide bar. Uh, workflow. So if you go to view, panels, what is still available will be there. Um, progressively these are being removed. 